Any comments or corrections? If not, I'll take a motion to approve. So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Alrighty. We have the May 2013 invoices uh, that cover the following areas. Jocelyn Lesser, it's invoice number seven, uh, and it's the OPM feasibility study. Uh, that invoice is for $13,000. Uh, Tape Associate, uh, which is invoice number 130505 uh, for the design of feasibility study. Um, it's a lump sum payment of 37500 and uh, the final uh, is the Tape Associates for environmental and site work, uh, site study, and that's 11660 for a total of uh, 62160 No, 49 I'm sorry, where am I? Right on the front of Tape's uh, invoice. You'll see it's totaled up. <coughs> 49160 I'm looking at uh, the a top sheet that I was provided with. Okay. That's the total. That's the total warrant. Okay. Oh, total. That's the total. There. Yeah, the total of the warrant. Right. No, but it yeah, pays only forty-nine. Total of both invoices together is sixty-two. That's correct. The, the the total of all invoices that I just mentioned oh. <laughs> it, is sixty-two one sixty. All right, I'm going to circulate that for signature. Are there any questions on the invoices? Okay, we'll move on then. Uh, to design status update. What do you think, Charlie? That's us. <laughs> so we have to speak through the mic, right? Yes. It's already on. It's already on. <laughs> Good evening. Um, <laughs> We are going to uh, t talk to you a little bit about where we are relative to progress around the design. And first, a little bit of history. The, ne the next thing on the agenda is a vote by you on a resubmission to the MSBA of the original feasibility study scheme. And we'll talk a little bit more about this when we get to that agenda item. But suffice it to say, we submitted a preferred schematic to the MSBA which showed um, one layout for the project. We then presented to them an option for another layout for the project which sort of had the two classroom wings for the middle school and the high school as parallel bars and said, well, this is another possibility we've been talking about. This subsequently um, <laughs> made them say, well, wait a minute, you've got multiple ideas here. We're not going to approve anything. We're going to ask you to continue to study this further. Um, and we then had a follow-up meeting in Boston with them, at which point we presented the scheme we are now proceeding with and that we've shared um, with the working group and the educators uh, and that you're going to vote on tonight um, as sort of the updated preferred schematic design. So that design looks like that. Do I hand these out? And um, you can add, you get your own 11 by 17 version here, so you can see it a little bit better. But the, the, final, um, the final disposition of this plan, the new building um, next to the existing high school to replace it, um, is a little bit different than what you saw previously, although not dramatically different than what you saw previously. Effectively, what we have is we have a wing that is to the north of the site, which is really the public spaces auditorium, gymnasium, cafeteria, and all the support spaces associated with those big spaces. And a main entrance lobby right here. What this allows us to do is essentially use this as not only the, for the school, but also as a community building, where you can actually lock off the balance of the building for evening functions. Um, 
Another development in the plan, which wasn't really here initially, is the idea that there actually there's a, there's a primary entrance, which is for visitors and the public, but there's also a secondary entrance, which is a high school entrance. And that high school entrance is only really being used for pickup and drop off. Um, but st high school students will be able either to be picked up from the front, of, dropped off from the front of the building by bus or by automobile, or if they come, them drive themselves. And they're going to enter into a different entrance than the middle school students enter into. We now have a dedicated middle school wing, which is here, and a dedicated high school wing, which is here, and then all the shared spaces are in the middle. So the middle school students move towards shared spaces, the high school students move towards the shared spaces. Shared spaces being art, being technology, being the media center, um, being, the, uh, um, being the greenhouse, and then of course music, classrooms up here, PE being up here, theater being up here. Um, within those wings, um, we have uh, the sixth grade on the first floor of the middle school, which is its own little sixth grade academy, which makes a lot of sense as a tr sort of transition year between elementary and middle school. The seventh and eighth grades on the second <coughs> floor of the middle school wing, which kind of a, from a curriculum point of view and developmentally makes a lot of sense. And then the high school will be uh, on two floors, um, and that's organized around a series of science labs and then the rest of the classrooms, which can really be organized however it seems most appropriate uh, and can change over time because, the, you know, an English classroom and a history classroom and a social studies classroom and a math classroom are quite similar. So how exactly it gets organized um, will, 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 uh, will kind of evolve. It is, should be noted that if the eighth grade is here, there is still that possibility of some cross over between 8th grade and ninth grade should that become a kind of a goal within the district educationally. Uh, and then of course this brown box is administration which includes you know health, the principals, et cetera, et cetera. The, 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 uh, guidance, the guidance suites are, are kind of embedded in the academic wings, there's two of them. Uh, and then obviously music support and PE support is also embedded within those program spaces. But Suffice it to say, uh, you know, the middle school students will come in that main entrance. They will either come down and go into the middle school, either the sixth grade on the first floor or the seventh and eighth grades on the second floor. Then they'll congregate probably at the CAF before they, go, before they uh, start school in the morning. The, middle, the high school students are going to enter into that other entrance, go down and go up the stairs or go straight into the first floor wing. And what we've really effectively done by doing this is, is get two different entrances for the two different populations and really have them have different entry sequence and different paths of travel when they arrive in the morning and when they leave in the afternoon. Now these, you know, middle school students and high school students will still pass each other in the hall, they're still sharing <laughs> spaces, they're going to be on the way to the cafeteria or the way back to the cafeteria, etc. However, this really does a pr very effective job of kind of, of, of separating that, that entry and leaving sequence, which is pretty great. Um, the greenhouse is on the south side. Um, and then the library has its own outdoor space. We have the possibility of the art rooms exit onto an outdoor space. We have the possibility of, of an exterior uh, uh, classroom. Um, so all in all, I think it's a really exciting plan. We're really pleased by it. We just had a long, very productive day with a lot of the staff talking about uh, getting their feedback on specifics around the layout of the building. That was very productive. We've come back with an enormous amount of information that we didn't have before today. Um, and we will continue to do that as the process moves forward to get feedback and guidance from, from the educators and the people who will be using the building. So all in all, very positive. Um, and we think this is a very, uh, a, a really good, efficient design. We think it works very effectively for these, for trying to do, we're sort of, we're, you know, we're threading the needle between trying to keep two populations somewhat separate, but also quite integrated, both in terms of their shared use and the fact that they're all part of the same educational community, looking for opportunities for crossover while still having them feel like they're in their own academic environment. So I think it's a great plan. Uh, it's really come a long way. We're making a lot of progress on it. Um, unfortunately, the site plan that we wanted to show you is 
not rendered, it's in black and white, so it is going to be effectively invisible to you. <laughs> so, so forgive us, but um, you're just, if you really squint, you might see a little something, but I don't think you're going to see much. But let me just describe it to you, and you'll have to imagine. It's actually not dramatically different than it was before, but um, over there is the existing turf football field. There's the Turkey Hill Middle School. Here's the existing high school. Here's the Paseo School. And the site plan has not changed dramatically. We still have that. So the, the building you just looked at is sitting right here on top of the two grass fields, two existing grass fields. The pick up and drop off is in the front. Uh, and the, uh, where the existing high school sits now will become two grass fields. Um, and the, there's going to be, this is the same scheme as you've already seen. <clears throat> There'll be uh, student parking and game day parking, essentially where parking is now behind the high school, and we're going to resurface the tennis courts, and we're going to retain, um, <clears throat> retain the memorial gate, retain the concession stand. We'll have a new, new, new bleachers and stands for football. Um, this will also be game day parking. We have paths that interconnect the, this campus. We have uh, uh, devel we've developed new parking for the Pasios and then parking in front of the high school, uh, middle school up here with pickup and drop off, dedicated pickup and drop off for bus, dedicated pickup and drop off <coughs> for auto, all going to these two entrances that I mentioned previously. Um, <clears throat> and the idea is we ought to be able to build this building while the existing high school is fully operational mm -hmm. without impacting on vehicular um, circulation, without impacting on any of the ongoing programs within the high school, and allowing for a construction entrance for the contractor that's separate from the entrance for students and, um, and parents and staff and visitors. And really, the only tricky thing is that we are losing a good deal of athletic space for at least a couple of years. We had a good conversation with the athletic folks today about this. They're aware of it. They seem to be pretty good sports about it. Um, they know that they're going to have heavy rotation on the turf field during that period because it's the only way this is going to work. I think your recreational programs are going to have, have to make some sort of accommodations. There has been a preliminary discussion about the possibility of taking the lawn out front and maybe regrading that to try to create a field there, possibly, because that could give some relief to this issue of, of having a, a, a more than two years without those two grass fields until they can be, you know, we have to get the new building built the old building torn down and then the work done and then the grass has to take. All of that takes quite a while. So, so that, that seems to be, I think this is, um, other than that, it's a pretty foolproof plan. But <laughs> that is a little bit of a, that's going to take some head scratching and some patience, I think, on the part of the community and on the part of the athletic program. Um, <clears throat> but this <clears throat> presumes the Pasios remains in place, which means we're taking it off the table as a, either a, a, constra a constraint to, relative to the school project, what, your, what the future of the Paseos is, you guys as a community can decide over time and we can accommodate whatever the decision is, but it, do, it, it means this project can be planned around it staying exactly as it is. Uh, if it got smaller, there's a possibility of more recreation space. If it stayed just the way it is now, that would be fine. If it disappeared, we could put a field there. It doesn't really it's not germane completely to this project. Um, <clears throat> so that's really where we are in terms of the planning. And we are proceeding along with this. And I don't think that um, what we learned today was a series of uh, subtle changes to what we've done, but nothing dramatic. So it is our um, intention to generally proceed along uh, with this path, unless we hear tonight that there are serious concerns about it. But I don't know if there are any questions about the plan. Well, I just wanted to you know, give the rest of the group background on what you said. Well, uh, as the discussions today, there was a series of programming meetings with uh, faculty and staff uh, and administrators that started at 10.30 this morning and ended about a half an hour ago. <laughs> and um, there was a lot of, of good feedback that we, we got in terms of what some specific needs of some you know, specific programming and curriculum needs. 
<clears throat> tomorrow, in fact, we'll continue with uh, uh, the uh, officials in town that uh, will partner us, uh, us in terms of regulatory compliance, uh, building, planning. Um. Yeah, tomorrow morning we're going to do a site plan review with, um, with, um, with regulatory agencies in town to just get their feedback on the layout of the site and the general configuration <coughs> of the building and make sure we're not doing anything that they find to be a concern. This is the time to, to get them involved in the loop and make sure we're doing things the way they would like to see them done. And then we have a technology meeting in the afternoon to go over sort of technology infrastructure plus technology, you know, the future sort of goals and plans of the district relative to educational technology. <coughs> so, are there any questions? Does that site plan um, have an entrance and exit off of Oak Avenue? Yes. Yeah, that's, that's pretty important because for two, re well, multiple reasons. Um, one reason it's important is because we need a construction entrance, right? We want a right. dedicated construction entrance. So but it's going to remain we, afterwards? Yes. We really want the contractor to come in, do the building without in any way um, interfacing with your ongoing school uh, operations. But also, and I think equally significantly, in terms of the final planning, um, A, it's really good idea to have two entrances and exits for a school for security reasons, for safety reasons. Uh, you really want, you, you know, any public safety official is going to tell you that. Um, so we really need to find two ways on and off the site. And furthermore, it puts a lot, it really, t it relieves the pressure on one entrance versus the other, so the Mass Ave entrance doesn't take so much traffic. And it may be that the, the long view of this is that you want to recommend to parents they come in off of Mass Ave so that they can queue, but there's a lot of queuing space in either direction, and this gives us the kind of length of run to have adequate queuing to try to, you know, um, adequately deal with issues around uh, pick up and drop off and too many parents' cars backed up. Does the, uh, how, how'd you get to your parking counts? We are using your existing parking counts for now, <clears throat> which are, are, are exceed the zoning regs for the town. But it's currently very tight for what we, on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, I guess we thought, we've, we've, a, we've asked this question multiple times, are the, is the existing parking count adequate? And we've always been told it is. I must say, whenever I come, there's always extra parking spaces. Okay. Maybe. For students, or what? Well, for students, for visitors, I know it tends to be a challenge to get a place to park if you come in during the day, unless you just park at the front door and you get lucky. But, uh, for visitor parking. Visitor parking, I know the bottom, the student parking, if that's, Loosened. I know that used to be a real challenge with people, kids parking up here, parking at the teen center, parking at the senior center. Uh, so if that's been alleviated by headcount reduction, you know, maybe it's not an issue, but it was an issue in the not too distant past. It, it's just the way the whole place, the whole front entrance way is set up. <clears throat> right. And how visitor parking in the entryway, the whole design of the building is too, I mm -hmm. think is yeah. is an I issue. mean, there's always empty spaces in the Paseos parking lot, which is where I park. I mean, I've never... It's never been full. Well, yeah, I guess the fact that we don't have a school going, that probably helps. Um, in, this, in this layout, though, any parking associated with the Pasios is now occupied by the new building? Or no, I think that the presumption was that this, was, this is not in the count. That's right. Pasios parking. How big is and that? And this I is Pasios parking. I can't honestly answer your question, okay. but I would say that it was in the range of... Fifty spaces. Okay, because that'll impact future use. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, you know, if, if you give us guidance on how many spaces we need, we're going to try to accommodate that. I mean, we could potentially extend this, you know, up. We could. Um, I mean, we'll find a way to solve the problem if we okay. need to. You'll have to just you have to give us guidance. I mean, okay. if you feel like that, if you if you give us a parking count that you think is critical for this, we'll obviously try to accommodate it. <clears throat> and then what's the capacity in the auditorium? Uh, the, today we were talking about 600 seats. What's that compared to what we have now? I have no idea. Uh, well, uh, somebody, thought it was five, somebody thought it was 550 right now. 
Okay. Okay. Thanks. Hey, Mike. Uh, hi. Uh, hi. So, yeah, the, the the plan looks, you know, it looks really interesting. I don't, I, this is the most detailed plan I've seen so far. Maybe I just hadn't looked at the space planning on the other proposals, but this looks, yeah, it, it looks like it's coming along nicely. I guess um, I want to make sure I understand the, the process today. We're, is our goal to approve this plan at the end of the today's meeting or by the end of the today's meeting? Or what's no, you're, the, 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 the goal is to approve the preferred schematic submittal, um, which we've already resubmitted to them, which showed a diagram version of what you're looking at now. What you are looking at now is going to evolve into the schematic design submission, which will be submitted during, uh, in, in September. Okay. So we are going, we, we, have a, we have a retroactive approval we have to make to the MSBA just to close the book on the preliminary, you're, you're retaking a vote you've already taken, which was to basically to approve new construction for a six through 12 middle high school adjacent to the existing high school, which you've already done. But they kicked it back to us and said, until you can further define what you think the plan ought to be, we're not closing this, this chapter. So we're asking essentially for a retroactive vote, I mean, it'll be dated today, on the last submission. It's not to do with the upcoming submission. Okay. Yeah, because, I mean, the, so the, that, that's good to know. Thanks for explaining that. Uh, the thing is, I want to understand, so it's pretty, what we're voting to approve is still pretty coarse granularity, yeah. not a lot of detail in it. Like, well, what, you're, what we're asking you to approve is, is, a, is already left the station in that it was a diagram. Okay. It was really coarse. It was the remember those color diagrams yeah. were just blocks of color. Yeah, I understand. That was what was submitted to the MSBA. However, it was based. It, this is based on that. So to the degree to which, if you had a strong objection to this diagram, we'd want to know it because we're proceeding on the assumption that this di diagram is acceptable. So, so when you say this diagram, what it, it, it the, the level of detail we're talking about? Are we're we ta talking about the fact that we have a middle school wing here, we have a high school wing there, we have a public uh, wing here, we have two entrances, we have administration in the front, we have the core spaces in the middle. We're asking for essentially an approval of that idea. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay, and it, it w the exact, we're not even approving the exact, you know, envelope or whatever, just that rough idea that we got those three functions yeah, uh, and those uh, rough locations. Right, I mean, the, the thing that went to the MSBA didn't even show all these walls, right? It showed sort of color block here, color block there, color block here, and they, this said middle school, this said high school, this said public, you know. So this is a lot further along than what you're approving for the purposes of the MSBA retroactively. However, I will say, again, if you, somebody had an objection to this, we'd need to hear it because we're proceeding on the assumption that this is acceptable. If someone else has a question, I'll take a break, but uh, no, go ahead. A few more. Yeah. Um, so see, okay. So that's that. Yeah, personally, that much, I don't have strong objections to, to this. I mean, I, I think it looks like it's coming along pretty nice. Uh, the question is, next question is about, um, so, you know, you, you presented uh, this plan and the schematic, and you presented the diagram to the extent that we can see it. And we've already got a few little questions here and there about traffic flow and, uh, you know, use of the field or not. And I understand, like you said, that you've... Uh, been having workshops up to as recently as this afternoon and whatnot. So it sounds like as far as iterating on this preliminary design, um, you know, if you had to shut it, if you had to lock it down now, there'd be a danger that you wouldn't be able to incorporate all, everything you'd want to from the feedback you received since you just like finished getting that feedback this afternoon. And like you got feedback from Dave <laughs> right now, for example, about traffic flow, you know, and parking counts and all that stuff. So I guess my question is, um, is there going to be, how much time is there for some of the details to evolve? You know? Again, the, what we're asking for a vote on has none of this detail. I understand. So, so forget the about vote, the vote. Okay, forget about the vote. So um, we're going to be moving forward on this. The schedule as set out would have us uh, submitting a package to our cost estimator in middle of August 
getting the costs back in the early-ish in September and asking for a vote of this committee to approve the schematic design submission to the MSBA at the September meeting so that by early October this schematic design package could be submitted to the MSBA. So in terms of how much longer will these plans be developed, probably for two more months. Okay, and during, during that period, what types of changes would be normal to expect? So for example, like... Um, we'll be, sorry. No, that's okay, like, for, like would you see, you know, poss based on conversations, expansion of par expansion or resizing of parking areas, uh, slight rework of, tra you know, what traffic flow and that type of stuff, or uh, minor changes to building footprint. What's the range of changes we might see between now and that two month period? Um, our hope, unless we hear something dramatically different, is that the plans will pretty much stay in, in concept the way they are now. Now, that being said, we will spend a whole lot of time developing them further. I mean, we're missing rooms in this thing. We found out today that we needed a this and a that and the other thing that aren't in here, right? Okay. So those kind of things are going to further develop as we go along. Um, in, in addition, in order to do a uh, adequate and responsible schematic design package, we're really going to do a fairly full set of drawings. We're going to do exterior elevations. We're going to do roof plans. We're going to do reflected ceiling plans. We're going to do, we already have preliminary furnishings plans. We're going to do uh, three-dimensional renderings. We're going to do preliminary wall sections. We're going to do uh, uh, some conceptual mechanical uh, layout. We are going to do uh, at least a limited m amount of structural layout. So as you can see, we are going to develop the to a point where we think a cost estimator has a pretty reasonable shot at getting a pretty reasonable scope together so that the price, the, the estimate we put together is a, is a responsible one. So all of that gets developed. Uh, so in terms of changes, the changes are really layering, layering information onto this um, and, um, and uh, getting to a point where we're pretty comfortable with the various big scopes of work. So yes, you might see the plan, you might suddenly see this room move to there, you might see this room get cut in half, um, you might see the, you know, as you said, the parking lot expand, but I don't think you would expect, we would not expect you to see dramatic changes unless we were given guidance that we ought to change it dramatically. Okay, yeah, thanks for answering. Any other questions? Yeah, um, my question would be, how does this impact the uh, timeline that we're on? I understand we're still scheduled to go back to the MSBA um, in July. Is that right? Uh, I'm no. sorry, at the end of June. <coughs> uh, no, Mark, what we're scheduled for is that was a concession to the MSBA. We move past that July, but they would, but on the condition that they would still continue to look at this type of design. So, what we're looking for is again the preferred schematic, and then our next submission to the MSBA is the third of uh, October. But as <clears throat> as um, Charlie had uh, discussed, that would go. We have to do obviously some schematic cost estimating. So that would start up in August. And uh, again, I can publish this whole schedule for you, but that, that's what we're shooting for in October. I, I don't have that, the previous schedule with me, but I thought that there was a, another meeting. We have some meetings. Okay, so there wasn't, we, we, we're, we're, this whole thing will keep us on schedule is the, is the bottom exactly. line. Exactly. Okay. That's right. Okay. What we asked them to do is because we, we initially thought if they moved it out to the 31st of July, it would take us off schedule. Mm -hmm. We convinced them to stay on schedule, and that's the schedule we put together. That was so we question. could still open. Yeah. Okay. okay. So it has no effect on the schedule. Okay, great. Any other questions? So we have a little bit more to this. One, Which, one, more, okay, one more question. Oh, one more question, sure. You, you've kept the TC Passage building up. You're able to design around it. Did you find the design impinged at all by having to work around that building, or? Um, 
No, I think the answer is no. I think that if the Paseos was not there, it's possible this roadway would move a little bit that direction because it might help a little bit with the, the fields. But really, I think it's, it really is fine with okay. the Paseos in place. And as I said, I think that if in the long run the town decided they wanted a smaller Paseos and, for instance, kept the front, then you could possibly use that as, as, as recreation space of some kind. If the town decided to take the pass to, to, delete, to, to demolish the Paseos, so you could literally make that into a field. And if you decided to keep the Paseos in its entirety, I think it would not be detrimental to the overall plan. So I think you're, I think this accommodates any decision about that building. Right. Thank you. And then this this plan again. I know it's early. There's allowances for additional classrooms if needed down the road. Yeah, the, the do you road. see those? Do you see on the end of the yeah, classroom yeah, wings yeah. those There's boxes? Those dotted lines. Yeah. yeah those are that's um, that's basically four classrooms per wing. So that would be a hundred students per wing, which is a t total expansion of two hundred students. Okay, so I mean that's good news because people are worried about the population we're using and projecting. Right. Mm -hmm. And is that allowed for in the? common spaces, the cafeteria, the kitchen, the gymnasium? It is not. It is not. It okay. is not because the MSBA would never reimburse you for it and it would push, the, and we'd, it would exceed, we'd exceed the space template and it would push your costs up. So I don't think there's any good way to kind of accommodate um, an, an expanded core at mm -hmm. this point. I don't think you can oversize your core. The MSBA won't support it. Okay. That's um, a good question. So, I mean, looking ahead, if we find ourselves in that unhappy place? Uh, looking ahead, if you found yourself in that unhappy place, my opinion would be that the issues you'd have are not at the gym, because yeah. that's a full regulation size gym, not at the auditorium, which I think is if, as long as you're adequate for 600 students. You could potentially run into an issue with your cafeteria, but frankly, you could expand your cafeteria. And the only other space that I think you could run into an issue would be your media center, and you could expand the library. Okay. So I think those possibilities are there. I think you'd get into a pretty costly project <laughs> if you started to do that. I mean, we're talking about a lot of additions, but I think it's possible. Okay. Thanks. So um, the other thing we wanted to talk about, oof, a little bit, Damien's going to talk about this, is the exterior just as a conceptual mass of the piece. Well, we have to develop this fully in front of doors of it, but we wanted you to at least respond to sort of what we're thinking about and, and get the feedback just on your sense of what you're feeling like you'd like, so that we make sure we don't go Thanks. off down the front of the back in the wrong direction. <laughs> yes, sir. Thanks, Charlie. Um, so, you know, we're not showing any fenestration on the, on the building itself. We're not showing windows into classrooms. We're not showing necessarily um, materials or roof overhangs or things like that. We're really showing extruded masses. And we're starting to show uh, some <coughs> of those exterior spaces that are created by the uh, floor plan that's being shown. So some of the spaces that Charlie was talking about, the spaces outside the art classroom, for example, um, the entry through the admin wing, the space outside the media center. So the, the uh, conceptual massing on the left-hand side of the page is as though you were standing at this bottom um, corner of the high school and you're kind of above the building looking back across. Um, so you're seeing the, the two gable ends are the two wings of the classroom with a flat section in the middle, which is where we could house our mechanical units. Um, and then on that diagram, you're seeing A, which is labeled for admin, which is that brown bar. Um, that really creates that exterior space that's right here. Um, and then in the background, you're seeing B, which is the middle school wing. Again, we're treating those as these two bars with these gable roofs. Um, and then the uh, diagram on the right-hand side of the page is showing as though you're standing down in this corner looking back towards where the media center is. Um, so we're showing some of those larger volumes. The media center would be a two-story volume. Um, the classroom wings themselves are obviously two-story volumes. The art classrooms would be two-story volumes. And then in the background, you're seeing gymnasium, which is a three-story volume, the auditorium, which is a three-story volume, and the cafeteria, which is a two-story volume. Um, so it's just showing some of the ideas we're having around, you know, very early ideas um, about the massing of the building. And then you're also seeing the greenhouse, which is 
Um, this little like jewel at the end of the building, which is facing down towards Mass Ave. Um, and then very early thinking about some of the materials, uh, brick, you know, maybe standing seam metal roofs on those uh, gable roofs for the classroom wings, uh, maybe polycarbonate panels into the gymnasium to get some uh, great natural light. Um, so. I mean, I guess one, one of the things we thought is we've done this on a couple, we're doing it in Maynard, uh, we've done it on a couple of projects. Uh, we, we found some fairly beautiful grayish, tannish bricks <coughs> that we almost wondered if we could use here. We were sort of thinking of those gable things as being almost like stone barns or something, you know, kind of all, uh, traditional stone barns, very simple, um, not a lot of uh, complication to them, very spare. Um, and then, um, and then we are thinking just for cost reasons that we might put CMU, uh, um, concrete block, there's a, there's a ground face concrete block that's very attractive onto the gym and cafeteria wing just because it, it, does, it does have a cost benefit to the, to the project and we're obviously looking for cost, uh, we're considering cost already. Um, the reason we have a combined, um, we're, we're combi trying to combine pitched roofs with flat roofs so that we, again, in part because it's very difficult to put pitch, pitched roofs all over a really big building. And secondly, so that we have a place to put mechanical units um, and a place to put fans, et cetera, et cetera. And because the, the, a flat roof costs considerably less than a pitched roof. So we thought this combination might be really appropriate and um, those classroom wings really will read like these barn forms and then um, and the rest of it could be really elegant and simple uh, but i guess one of the things we we're curious about i mean to us your public library is a kind of tan building and um, it seemed to us that it might be appropriate to do something that kind of a color but we're interested in hearing if somebody has a strong view on what they thought you know Lunenburg um, really what you want this building to represent in terms of in terms of the town and the community if somebody was saying you know I always thought it would be such and so this would be the time for us to hear so that if we come in next time we know uh, if anybody has a strong view <laughs> I think that's what we're sort of looking for um, and if not, we will uh, we'll, we'll come up with something that's really elegant and simple and beautiful. And cost, and we're trying, again, trying to be as cost, conscious of cost as we possibly can. It's a big, expensive building already. And we don't want to add extra cost in terms of the exterior. Any thoughts or comments? I think the, the notion of being cost conscious is, uh, is very important. And, and that's an important consideration for the town. Uh, it's a very large building, a very large project. Uh, it's it's going to be relatively expensive as it is. Um, so any effort to be cost conscious is, uh, is a good idea. I support that. And durable. Mm -hmm. Okay, Charlie. Thank you. You're welcome. The, okay, the next item is uh, MSBA local actions and approval certification. That's similar to what Charlie just spoke about, Mike. Okay, so we're going to move to uh, approve, approve <coughs> again <laughs> the submission that we have previously submitted to the MSBA. Uh, I'll take a, just a, a, a motion to get the discussion started. So I move we reaffirm our vote uh, to um, approve the preferred schematic for the new building 6 through 12 option. Second. Yeah. Um, as well as a summary that describes um, that diagram. So this is really a supplement to the preferred schematic submission. Okay. So that's what that is. And I have um, just one. Just going backwards in time is, is 
Sean talked about is this being retroactive. Why don't you come on up so that... Sure. I think you can just know that there, there's more development since... This is all predicated on the fact that when our previous submission, we showed this block that was sort of, sort of like an, a double H, if you will. It was an H with connections in it, along with this one. And we, all we approved was the schematic design for the 6 through 12 solution. What we're approving now is saying that this is the approved solution. <laughs> Okay, was there a second? There was. Okay, so uh, discussion? Are we ready for a vote? Was that motion worded right or do we need to reword it? So it would be um, a motion to approve the updated preferred schematic diagrams and written preferred solution summary as a supplement to the preferred schematic solution, uh, preferred schematic report. And you'll make that your so moved. Your motion? And second. Okay. <laughs> now we're on we're on the page. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? <coughs> Pretty great. This is a, we talked about this at the last meeting, the construction manager pre qualification selection committee. Uh, this is the group that's going to look at the um, uh, construction manager, uh, the same at risk uh, proposals that we're, we're, we're soliciting. I think we have f four currently that we're looking at. Uh, this committee will basically just go through those four which have been vetted by uh, our OPM and, and uh, uh, make a recommendation to the committee as a whole. Anything else I need to say? To Right. To work on the project, there's a next round. Right. right now, we just we went out and we do um, an open process by um, qualifications from construction management firms. So now the pre-qualification selection committee will review the will review the qualifications and determine whether these firms are qualified to work on your project. And then those firms would be invited to submit a full proposal to the committee who would then make a recommendation to this committee to hire the... Um, See him at risk. Yes, see him at risk. I mean, there's more paper. <laughs> there's a lot more paper. We're, we're nowhere near finished yet. <laughs> <laughs> so um, this is just a motion to tell this us is who, a, the, who the members of the committee right. are. Right. Now, I understand that we have some volunteers. Yes? Yes. Mr. Matthews, Mr. Erickson. And I, I think that uh, committee, Amanda? that committee's made up of a certain representative, three of the, from the school building committee, but also the designer as well as uh, the OPM are represented on that committee right. as That's well. That's correct. Right. right. So um, I'll entertain a motion that those uh, three individuals, unless somebody else wishes to also uh, volunteer. Uh, that those individuals be named as the CM at risk pre-qualification pre selection committee. You want to make that motion? Yeah, I'll make that motion. Um, so I'll move that. It's you, right? No, it's Mark, Dave, uh, Dave and, and John. And John. Oh, okay. Is, is that... Um, is John a voting member of the school building committee? He's not, but it's not necessarily a, a necessity of the... the it's, it's just a recommendation. This isn't forward. something that's created by regulation. This is something that we're doing. Oh, right. Okay. Okay, that's why I was... Okay, so we don't need three voting members. We can have two voting members and an advisor. Correct. Correct. Okay. So, all right. So, I'll move that John Londa, Dave Matthews, and Mark Erickson... Uh, are appointed to the Construction Manager Pre-Qualification Selection Committee. And I'll second that. Excellent. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you for your 
Mike, if I could Your just time. add one thing to that. If we could set up a, it, we'd like to have, Jeff would like to talk to all three members. There's, there's kind of a formal process to okay. it. Okay. We were hoping to do that Friday. I mean, and if that conflicts with anybody's work, we could do it by conference call, whatever is easier for everybody. But he's more than willing to come out here in the morning and uh, sit down with everybody. And it just walks us through what we'll look at through the process, how we do the interviews, how we do the votes. On Friday morning? Yeah, 10 o'clock. Would that work? I can make that work. Oh, perfect. Works for me. Okay, I'll set it all Hold up. Hold on. We're waiting for one more member. One more. <laughs> 10 o'clock? That's fine. Oh, perfect. Yay. Thank you. Excellent. Sure. Eric, I have a copy of all of the qualifications. So where will we? Uh, TCP you can do is? that at TCP oh, in room 13. Yeah, we'll set it all up and send you an invitation. Okay. Thank you. All right. Now we have a, a bit of sad business we need to take care of. Well, it's happy for, for our member, but uh, Rich Cohn has submitted a letter of resignation uh, from the building committee. Um, Rich, thank you for your time and, you know, good luck on your new endeavor. Rich is now a physics and a chem teacher at the high school. Um, we'll be... Needing another member, we already have a process in place. We've done this once before, right? Through the Board of Selectmen, is that how it happens? That's why uh, we'll uh, put out a call for volunteers and then uh, people that are interested in serving can submit their name and then I believe the committee um, talk to them, interview them. Sure, they'll do a talent bank if they're interested and get that online at the website. And right. Yeah. And to, for anybody that might be watching tonight, to get out the word that uh, we, we are looking for an additional member from the community, um, and uh, we'd welcome you know everybody's input. And just to add, we have to formalize that with the MSBA. So when you let us know, we have a form letter. We'll take care of it for you and swap out the names. Yeah. Well, hopefully we'll we'll try. I mean, to get somebody in place before the next meeting. I'm hoping that that's doable. Yeah, that's fine. There's no really time on huh. Upcoming meetings. Uh, we spoke earlier about the meeting tomorrow with the town regulatory officials, uh, the educational technology workshop, which is also happening tomorrow. Working group meetings. Uh, we have not begun those yet. Is there a need for us to talk about that further? No, I don't think there is tonight. Will that be, just give me a, 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 an idea of when you think that the, that need will arise. Well, I think the first one would obviously be the CM at risk meeting. That would be a small group of the working groups. As we get into more programming or any of those things, there'll be some discussions over. As we start getting estimates back, uh, rather than presented at night, we'll have a small working group to start going through costs. So I'll keep you abreast of when we need to sit. Uh, Greg, I think we should circle back around to the block C and the principles at some point about the design. You know, we have this feedback. I agree. Okay. Yeah, I think that that's a, a very <coughs> wise thing to do because there, you know, again, we we had a lot of discussions today that I think uh, may, may inform, you know, how we how we do things, and we, need to make sure we want to touch base again. Very good. We are. Uh, Currently scheduled for our next meeting to be July the 24th, 2013. That will be at room thir No, that will be here again, will, will it not? Um, I think we asked for it to be here. Okay. I don't know if we have confirmation on that yet. Okay. Uh, keep, keep, stay tuned on that one, but our hope is, is that it will be here again and will be televised. Um, community outreach efforts. Uh, I'm aware that there are fo some, some folks in town that uh, are looking to uh, get together in support of the project. Um, know nothing further than that at this point. Um, and, and hoping that they can help partner with us uh, as the committee uh, in terms of, uh, you know, us just providing um, information and uh, to educate the community. 
Well, and I know our efforts um, internally, we continue to keep the website um, updated. I, I believe you should have seen some article, uh, an article in the paper uh, just recently with the town-wide edition. Um, and I, I know we're going to be working with the Lunenburg Cable folks to do a video uh, that will provide insights into the current conditions within the existing high school. Sure. We'll be working on that this summer, and we'll post that up at our YouTube uh, channel as well. So uh, those are some of the plans that right now we have uh, that we'll be moving forward over the summer in terms of information and communication. And of course we are still uh, looking for something in uh, early September as a as a kind of a formal once we've gotten the um, uh, the information you know kind of in a ready to go situation that we will uh, hold our uh, public informational meetings. Um, I also assume that uh, through the invitation of a of a of a support group uh, in town that <coughs> we will have opportunities to do small group presentations as well. Mr. Matthews, could you update us on the um, TCP reuse committee and the timelines for that too? <clears throat> well, the committee I think will be fully staffed and operational as of tomorrow. Okay. I think everyone has come forth that's going to be part of that. Um, so that will be run by uh, Mr. Toll from our board. Mm -hmm. uh, he'll be the leader on that. Um, so you know, I think the timeline they're working toward is about the same time that we're wrapping this up so that we're all in the same okay. uh, direction going forward. So. Okay. How many members Thank is on that? It was uh, nine. 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 <clears throat> Is there other business? Any public comment? Oh. Did you have something? Uh, yeah, I did, Mike. Just a small thing. Um, so if I understand correctly, our next meeting is on July 24th. Um, in between this meeting and the previous meeting, there's been some good updates sent out by email, kind of keeping, I think, at least this group abreast of what's going on. Um, you know, personally, I'd find that useful if it's possible you know there seems to be like there's going to be quite a bit going on in the next probably between now and the next meeting uh both in terms of the uh the subcommittee's work on the uh um construction manager at risk but uh but also uh, i think more um what i'm more interested in following is uh the progress in terms of the feedback that's identified to address the solutions that are found to address feedback and any kind of evolution of the schematic in that time. Um, you know, probably just, you know, one or two updates between now and the next meeting by email would be really neat if it's possible. easily accommodated. Yeah. Mm. That's not a problem. Mm. Absolutely. Good. Thanks. And Mike, just uh, just from a quorum standpoint, I'm going to be at the state principals conference at our next meeting. Just, okay. just for point of clarification, so I will not be in attendance on the 24th. Yeah, and I will probably not be in attendance, but Dave will be here. He apparently has all the solutions anyway. Yeah. <laughs> 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 all right is there other public comment if not i'll take a uh, a motion to adjourn so moved second second all those in favor aye aye aye, aye. thank you all thank you thank you good night <laughs>